So in this video, what I want to do is to use our definition of the derivative as a limiting procedure, which I've written here, to explore four different examples. And one of these examples involves a negative power of x, one of them is a fractional power of x, x to the half, one of them is a case where you would normally think you need to use the chain rule, it is 1 divided by the square root of x squared plus 2, and one of them is x to the power of 2 thirds, a slightly more complicated fractional power than x to the half. And in each case, we can obtain the results, this is how we know that the results are valid, from our definition of what a derivative is as a limiting procedure. So what we have to do is we take each one of these in turn, we substitute it into here, so we evaluate the function at x plus delta, subtract it, evaluate it at x, and then we can't immediately set delta to zero because of the delta down here, so what we have to do is we have to manipulate this difference of the function evaluated at x plus delta and then subtracting the function evaluated at x. We have to manip manipulate this difference so as to extract a power of delta to cancel this delta in the bottom and then see if we can safely take the limit delta goes to zero. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do each one of these in turn, but if you'd like to explore them, you're also very welcome, of course, to have a go at trying to do them one by one, or just perhaps pausing at the relevant stages, having seen one and then trying it on, on the next one. OK, so let's now move on to the first one, differentiating 1 over x using our definition. So our first example here is to differentiate 1 over x using our definition. So this is going to be the limit as delta approaches 0. And now I've got here a difference of two fractions because my function is a fraction. And I don't really want to write a difference of fractions all divided by delta. So instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to write this delta in the denominator as a factor of 1 over delta multiplying everything. So I'll open brackets. And now I've got to have my function evaluated at x plus delta. So that's going to be 1 divided by x plus delta. And then I have to subtract the function evaluated at x. And that's just 1 over x. So what I want to do is I want to manipulate the terms in this bracket in such a way that I can extract an overall power of delta to cancel with this one and leave me with something where I can safely take the limit as delta goes to zero. And that will be our derivative. So the natural thing to do is to take this difference of fractions and put them on a common denominator. So let's do exactly that. So we have the limit as delta approaches zero, one over delta, brackets, and our common denominator is going to be a factor of x plus delta, all multiplied by x. And from our first term, I need to put an x in the numerator so that it would cancel with this and leave me with 1 over x plus delta. And then for the second term, I have minus brackets x plus delta. And I have to be very careful that I put brackets around this or I'll get a minus sign wrong. So now I can expand the brackets. I'll have minus x minus delta. The x's will cancel and I will have a factor left in the numerator of minus delta, and the delta will cancel with this. So what I'm going to get is the limit as delta goes to zero, one over delta, minus delta, as we just said is what the numerator will be, and then we have x plus delta multiplied by x, and as we just said, there is an immediate cancellation, the delta here, cancels the delta here, leaving me with a minus 1 in the numerator. So at this stage, it's now safe to take the limit as delta goes to 0. And the limit as delta goes to 0 is going to be, well, our numerator is minus 1. And in the bottom, I'm going to have x, because x plus delta as delta goes to 0 approaches x, multiplied by x. So I'm going to have minus 1 over x squared. So we conclude that the derivative 
with respect to x, 1 over x is minus 1 over x squared, which is a standard result familiar from the rule for differentiating x to the n that you get n times x to the n minus 1. So this is as expected. So we've now seen how we can get that. And the points to notice were, as ever, that we have to manipulate these brackets to extract an overall power of delta to cancel that, and then it is somehow possible to take the limit as delta goes to naught safely, and we've got the standard result. So in this example, we want to calculate the derivative of the square root of x from our definition. So we're going to have the limit as delta approaches 0 of the square root of x plus delta, that's the function evaluated at x plus delta, minus the square root of x, all divided by delta. And what we have to do is to manipulate this in such a way as to extract a delta. So we like to somehow get rid of the square roots. And of course we can't do that directly, but there is a very useful algebraic technique which we can use here. And so the technique is to recall that we can always write the difference of two squares, a squared minus b squared, as a minus b multiplied by a plus b. And that means that we can always write a minus b here as a squared minus b squared divided by a plus b. So this is then a squared minus b squared over a plus b. So the connection between this algebraic identity and our numerator here is if we were to choose a to be the square root of x plus delta and b to be the square root of x, that means that we can always write the square root of x plus delta minus the square root of x is, now it's going to be a squared, so that is the square root of x plus delta squared, so that will be x plus delta minus, and then this is the square root of x squared, so that will be x, and this is all divided by the sum of the square roots, so that's going to be the square root of x plus delta plus the square root of x. And so we see here that the x's cancel in the numerator here, and we have delta divided by the square root of x plus delta plus the square root of x. So now we can take this, which is just the numerator, rewritten using this identity here, we can substitute it into our definition for the derivative. The deltas will cancel, and it will be safe for us to take the limit as delta approaches zero. So I've just made myself some room. and Now this can be substituted in, as I said, into here. So therefore, the derivative with respect to x of the square root of x is going to be the limit as delta approaches 0 of delta all over, and there's a power of delta from the bottom here, and then that multiplies the square root of x plus delta plus the square root of x, close brackets. So we see that we can cancel that factor of delta with that factor. It's now safe to take the limit as delta approaches 0, and so therefore we're going to obtain 1 divided by, and on the bottom here we have the square root of x in the limit as delta approaches 0, plus the square root of x, so that's 2 times the square root of x, so we have 1 over 2 times the square root of x. And if we were to write the square root of x 
as x to the half, then from the familiar rule, you can pull the half down, that's what we see here, and then you'd be multiplying that by x to the minus a half, and that is 1 over the square root of x. And this should help give us more confidence in why that rule works for fractional powers. So what we want to do now is to obtain the derivative of 1 over the square root of x squared plus 2 from our definition. This looks somewhat more sophisticated, and it's the sort of problem where you'd normally need to use the chain rule if you were going to differentiate it using the rules of differentiation, which of course all follow from our definition. But you can actually obtain it using the techniques of the previous two examples combined. So if you would like to, you're very welcome to perhaps pause the video now, use those techniques and see how you get on. Um, so if you want to do that, press pause now. Welcome back. So what we have is the limit as delta approaches zero. Again, this is going to be a difference of fractions all divided by delta. So I think it's easier to write one over delta out front, open big brackets, and then put first of all one over, and it's going to be the square root of x plus delta all squared plus 2, all of which is inside a square root, minus 1 over the square root of x squared plus 2, all in the square root, close big brackets. So we have here a difference of two fractions, so it's very natural to put the fractions on a common denominator. So what we're going to have is the limit as delta approaches 0, 1 over delta, and then our common denominator is going to be the product of the two square roots, and I'm just going to put the simplest one first, so it's the square root of x squared plus 2, multiplied by the square root of x plus delta, all squared, plus 2, square root of all that, and in the numerator, from my first term, I have to have this square root on top. So I have the square root of x squared plus 2 minus the square root of x plus delta squared plus 2. So if I now look at this and think about the limit as delta approaches 0, well, of course, we've still got this problem with 1 over delta here. The denominator factor here is absolutely safe. As delta goes to 0, it is not approaching 0. But the numerator does vanish as delta approaches 0. So what we have to do is to manipulate this numerator factor in a way in which we can extract a factor of delta to cancel with this one, and then it will be safe to take our limit. Now, if we look at the numerator here, it is a difference of two square roots. And that's exactly what we had in the previous example. So therefore, we can attempt to use again the same identity for the difference of square roots. And through that, we're going to be able to safely take the limit. So let me just pause and make a little bit of room. So the identity which we're going to need is again the identity for the difference of two square roots such as we have here. And the identity was, if we recall, the square root of a minus the square root of b is a minus b, all divided by the square root of a plus the square root of b. And here a is x squared plus 2, and b is x plus delta, all squared plus 2. So therefore, we are going to have that the square root of x squared plus 2 minus the square root of x plus delta squared plus 2 is going to be, and the denominator is now the sum of the square root, just as we have here. So this is the square root of x squared plus 2 plus 
the square root of x plus delta all squared plus 2 and in the numerator we have the arguments of the roots that's x squared plus 2 minus and then it is x plus delta all squared plus 2 so the 2's will cancel when we expand this we get an x squared factor which will cancel the x squared here and we're going to have minus 2x delta those are the cross terms from expanding this and we're going to have minus delta squared and those terms come from just writing this as a and this the argument of this root as b and expanding the brackets so now what we've done is we've been able to write the numerator here in a way such that the numerator of this is proportional to delta so we're going to be able to cancel this 1 over delta factor and what we're left with here has a perfectly good limit as delta approaches 0 because of this plus sign here nothing is going to diverge so let me now just pause and make some room so what we want to do now is to take this expression for the difference of the roots and substitute it back into here and calculate our derivative. So what we're going to find therefore is that the derivative of 1 over the square root of x squared plus 2 is the limit as delta approaches 0 we have this factor of 1 over delta here and then we can write our numerator well the numerator part of it is minus 2x delta minus delta squared and on the bottom we are going to have two factors the factor that's initially here and the factor that comes here so we're going to have, first of all writing out this, we're going to have the square root of x squared plus 2 multiplied by the square root of x plus delta all squared plus 2. And then this is going to be multiplied by the sum of the square roots. So that is the square root of x squared plus 2 plus the square root of x plus delta squared plus 2 square root of all of that close brackets so at this stage we see that it is possible to cancel the delta down below with an overall power of delta here which removes one of those and leaves the power of delta there and at this stage it's now safe to take the limit delta goes to zero. The numerator is minus 2x. So we're going to have for our result equals minus 2x, that's our numerator. And on the bottom we have, well first of all we have the square root of x squared plus 2. But here as delta goes to naught, we're going to get here x squared plus 2, so the square root of x squared plus 2. So we've got the square root of x squared plus 2 multiplied by the square root of x squared plus 2. Here we're going to get the square root of x squared plus 2 plus the square root of x squared plus 2 in the limit that delta goes to naught. So this is 2 times the square root of x squared plus 2. So overall we are going to have a factor of 2 coming from the sum of these two and we are going to have multiplying together 1, 2 and a third factor of the square root of x squared plus 2. So this is going to be x squared plus 2 to the 3 halves. So I can write it as x squared plus 2 all to the 3 halves. And at that stage, I can cancel the 2's that we have here and here. 
and we have minus x over the square root of x squared plus 2, all to the 3 halves. And I think it's interesting to look at this and to compare it with how you would calculate this from the chain rule. To use the chain rule, if you differentiate this, you would say that this is something to the power of minus a half. So you would multiply by minus a half. Here's the minus sign. Here's the 2 on the bottom. You would reduce the power by minus 1. So it would go from minus a half to minus 3 halves. That's exactly what we see here. And you would multiply by the derivative of the argument of the square root. And the derivative of the argument of the square root is the derivative of x squared plus 2, and that's 2x. And that's what this factor here is giving us. So we see exactly the structures that would appear from the chain rule. So at this stage we're going to go on to another slide and calculate the final example for this video. So for our final example of using our definition of the derivative to obtain the derivative of various functions, we're going to look at x to the power of two thirds. And just substituting this straight into the definition gives us immediately this result here. So what we need now is an identity similar to the identity that we had before for the difference of square roots, but we need a generalization of it. And the generalization of it is going to be based upon the following identity. So the identity is that if we want to look at the difference a to the n minus b to the n, that we can factorize this. And you might well expect this, because if a is equal to b, this will vanish. So we can factorize this as a minus b multiplying into a to the n minus 1, so that this goes together with this to give us the term we need here. But then we've also got minus b to the times a to the n minus 1 from this. So to cancel this, we add plus a to the n minus 2 times b plus a to the n minus 3 times b squared plus dot 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 down to a times b to the n minus 2 plus b to the n minus 1. And this is a genuine um, general identity which is extremely useful for calculations like this. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to look at the example of this with n replaced by 3. And the reason I want n to be replaced by 3 is because if I cube this, I get rid of the problem of having it to a fractional power. I would have x plus delta squared, and if I cube this, I would have x squared. And that difference is something that we can calculate straightforwardly. So let's take this general identity and look at it with n equals 3. So what we have is a cubed minus b cubed is a minus b multiplied by a squared plus a times b plus b squared. And that means that we can write a minus b as a cubed minus b cubed all divided by a squared plus ab plus b squared. And that's the identity that we now want to use to substitute into here with a being x plus delta to the power of two thirds and b being x, x to the power of two thirds. Then when we cube it, we will have x plus delta squared minus x squared. So we pause and make some room. So therefore, the derivative of x to the two thirds is the limit as delta approaches zero of one over delta. And then we have, as we've said, a is x plus delta to the two thirds. We now cube it. 
So we're going to get x plus delta all squared minus b is x to the two thirds. We cube it, we subtract x squared. And on the bottom, we have a squared plus ab plus b squared. Now, a was x plus delta to the two thirds, so a squared is x plus delta to the four thirds, two thirds squared, plus, and then we have a, so it's x plus delta to the two thirds multiplied by b which is x to the two-thirds, plus, and then we have b squared, which is x to the four-thirds. And the point to notice now is that in our numerator, if we expand this, with the x squared factor will cancel. We're going to get a 2x delta plus a delta squared. So everything will be proportional to delta, and it will be safe to take the limit. So let me just pause and make some room. So what we get is the limit as delta approaches 0, 1 over delta, and the numerator is 2x delta plus delta squared. And on the bottom, we have exactly the same as a moment ago, x plus delta to the four thirds plus x plus delta to the two thirds times x to the two thirds plus x to the four thirds. And now it is safe to cancel this delta with that, that and one power here. And now, because we don't have any um, thing that diverges as delta approaches zero, it is safe to take the limit. And in the limit, the numerator just becomes 2x because this will vanish. This will become x to the four thirds. This becomes x to the two thirds times x to the two thirds, which is x to the four thirds. And this is also x to the four thirds. So we have x to the four thirds once, twice, three times. So we have on the bottom 3 times x to the 4 thirds. So let me just make a little bit of room to write that. So this is going to be 2x from the numerator. And on the bottom we have 4 times x to the 4 thirds. Sorry, I wrote 4, I meant to write 3. There are 3 terms. Let me just correct that. 3. So, this gives us a power, or a factor rather, of 2 thirds. And then here we have x divided by x to the 4 thirds. So that means we have x to the overall power of 1 third on the bottom. Or x to the minus a third, if you prefer. So I can write this as 2 thirds x to the minus one third. And that is our result for the derivative of x to the two thirds from first principles. And the identity that we used was this one, suitably rearranged. And this identity, this is a key identity, which allows us to differentiate any fractional power and also any negative fractional power. And at this stage, I'll stop this video.